Uh, he's the greatest bowler of all time. Let me just put that out there. Uh, he's never shied away from the spotlight on or off the pitch. Hmm. And Shane Warm is now revealing all in an explosive new autobiography, opening up about his personal life and, of course, <laughs> his extraordinary career as well on the pitch. And he's here, fresh from the Dunhill Lynch Golf Tournament. <laughs> so Warnie and I played together on the, the second day. I'd already dispatched Kevin Peterson on day one. Shane, great to see you. It's, yep. a, it's a fantastic book, yeah, you're, because you really don't hold back. You wrote it with Mark Nicholas, who was the guy you played cricket with yep. uh, down at Hampshire, a great guy. Uh, it's, a, it's such an insightful look, really, at the life of a professional sportsman. I, I got a bit of that, actually, in this golf tournament, watching professionals going about their game. It's not all roses. It's not all no. happy. It's not all everyone getting on like happy campers. It's a rough, tough world, international sport. Yeah, look, I'm very grateful for the opportunity and thankful for it, and it was great fun. But it's not always, you know, it's, it's hard work. Um, look, it's, I'm not trying to say it's difficult and there's a lot of harder things to do, but the pressure and everything that's on, um, you know, in my case, it wasn't a case of just turning up on the last day, bowling and uh, taking four or five wickets and trying to win the game. There's a lot of hard work that goes into it, a lot of practice that goes into it. What's the, what's the best and worst thing about becoming a, a sporting icon to your country as you became pretty quickly? Well, the worst thing is, um, probably the worst thing is the intrusion. There's no, there's judgmental. Everyone judges you on your things that you do, the way you act, um, some of the things that happen in your life, good and bad. Mm. Um, so the judgments that people you don't even know, they're sitting there writing about you and what sort of person you are and they don't even know you. Um, that's probably the worst case, I would say. That's the worst thing. The best what, thing... When you say people didn't really know you, what do you think people assumed about you that you felt was misjudged? Well, perception doesn't always equal reality. Mm, um, you know, it's easy to read the headlines and we all make a few mistakes along our journey. Uh, I've made plenty and I'll make plenty more. Um, but, it was, but I always... I, th I think the most important thing with me, I've never pretended to be something I'm not. Mm. I've always been myself. And I think sportsmen get into trouble when they pretend to be something they're not. It's like social media, when people pretend yeah. the life they have. You know, just be true to yourself, be honest up front and don't pretend to be something Otherwise you're not. Otherwise the mask slips. That's right, mm. you know. So I think I'm proud of just who I am. I'm happy with who I am and I've always just tried to be myself. And then the worst is that you felt misjudged, but what was the best thing? The best thing, I mean, it's pretty amazing travelling around the world eight, nine months of the year with your mates, um, trying to hmm. win, uh, you know, in a game of cricket. The banter cricket, that was great oddly, fun. has one of the worst suicide rates right. for ex-players of yep. any sport in the world. Is part of that that you're spending so much time on the road, if you're successful, yeah. so much time that actually real, the real world, when you yeah. have to get plunged back into it, if you're not a commentator, <clears throat> yeah. you're not really trained for anything else, suddenly the real world is a scary place. It lacks exactly. Luster. Yeah, it is. And, that, you know, you're surrounded by people that you're all doing the same thing and you care about each other and you're there for each other. And suddenly, when you retire, if you can't get a gig at commentary or something else, coaching, then you're out on your own. And that uh, adrenaline of walking out in front of 80, 90,000 people, having people around you all the time, mm. Um, it is great fun, but then to try and replace that is very, very difficult. Mm. Um, so I go into the book a lot about those sorts of things and, you know, how, how, how fun it is and also it's how important it is to talk to people. If you do get lonely, if you do get down, uh, it's very important to talk to people It too. is important, and particularly for men, particularly yep. for strong men, mm -hmm. it's so important to admit that you're not strong all the time. Yeah, yeah it, 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 absolutely. And that's why I go in the book. I went and saw a guy called Jeremy Snape and uh, it was pretty... It's, you know, it's He's the ego sport, sort of thing, psychology. Sport, sports psychology. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty, you know, in an ego-filled world and in a cricket where alpha males are like this, it's very hard to say, you look, I had to go and see someone. Um, but I wanted to be better and I've never really revealed that to anyone. But mm -hmm. I spent a few days with Jeremy locked away in a hotel trying to be a better person and understand why things happened. And I go into detail in the book about it. What did it. you learn about yourself in that process? What did I learn about myself? I, I, the one, I'll tell the, you, the, one the of the first questions you, yeah, he yeah. asked me, he said, um, flight... Let's say one whatever. EY 100 uh, uh, crashed. Uh, Mr. And Mrs. Smith, Mr. And Mrs. Jones passed away, and Shane Warne. Write your own obituary. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, hang on a minute. <laughs> this is not easy to do. So I had to try and write that, which was pretty, you know, it, it's what you think people think of you and what you. What, what you hope they say. think of you. Yeah, and, but also what you think they're thinking about you. So what, did you say, what did you say about yourself? Some wonderful things I said. <laughs> I said some wonderful things about myself. Um, but that was quite tough. And I. I think um, I, I worked out that when you get told you're not good enough at an early age, um, you can either go two ways. You can sit there and sulk and go, you know, and go to things that you shouldn't be doing, or you can get driven by it and be inspired by it 
and try and do something else. And I hope the book inspires people as well to go and, as you say, Susanna, to talk to people if they need to. You, you've, had a, you've, yeah. you've had a lot of, you know, turbulent stuff yep. on and off the field. The, the great constant was your family <clears throat> were yep. rocks to you. And I've met, had the great pleasure of meeting yeah. your parents many times and yep. they're wonderful people. How important was that structure at the base of your family as stuff was sometimes spiralling out of control? Yeah, very. Um, I'm very lucky to have a great family, great people around me. Um, it's not easy. Uh, be, it's quite lonely being away on the road for a lot, but it's always nice to get told, hey, pull your head in. You know, sometimes people can't tell you that, and I'm very lucky that my mum and dad often remind me to pull my head <laughs> in all the time. Um, so it's very lucky with those guys. And my children, you know, they're, mm. they're, they're no filter with the kids, is there? They just sort of tell you how it is and how they're feeling, which is... Um, which is awesome, and I've got a great relationship with them. You could have avoided it in the book, but you're honest about your relationship with Liz Hurley, yep. saying that it was th those years that you spent with her, the yeah. happiest of your life. I, I suppose people say in a rela every relationship is different, and too many people say, you know, we want white picket fence, children, uh, husband and wife, and this is a certain way it is, but and every relationship is different, and it's whatever works for you two mm. is the right relationship. And for us, we were great, you know, and it was the happiest time of my life. I was madly in love with Elizabeth and we're still friends now. Uh, we still speak to each other all the time. I think our kids speak to each other. Mm. Her, her son, Damien, speaks to my daughter, Summer. Um, so it was great fun. Unfortunately, it just, didn't fizzle, it just fizzled out. It was nothing that I did wrong or she did wrong. It was just one of those things. It was all got a bit too difficult. Your, your ex, uh, Simone, <laughs> uh, came out yes. at the weekend and had a few things to say. Who hates the limelight, I think yeah. she said. Yeah. <laughs> That's right, yeah. uh, I mean, what, what did you feel when you read what she had to say? Well, at least she told sort of truth that mm. her and I had broken up and split up before <laughs> anything happened with Elizabeth and I. Um, so at least that she backed that up and didn't say anything there. But I th look, she, I think she's hurting a little bit from the mm. book and that's why she's just come out and said some stuff. That's that, the risk, isn't it, when you do yeah. tell all... Yeah, and I think in the book, it's, I, I think when I've read sports books, too many people aren't brutally honest. And in this book, I've been brutally honest oh, with everything. It's incredible how honest you are. The, mm. the streak that struck me, though... It's one I've detected in someone like Siri and Botham, who is mm. probably the British warning in terms of <laughs> accomplishment. There's not much regret. You guys yep. don't look back. That's Everything right. is forward all the time. Mm -hmm. Even when it's really big stuff that's gone wrong or whatever, there's that streak you both have, which I think made you great champion sportsmen. Mm -hmm. Has that been a good or bad thing in your life, to be able to keep pushing and not look back? Yeah, it's the old glass half full, I suppose. It's... Mm. When things happen, if, if I sat here and regretted everything I've done in my life, I'd be in a straitjacket and, <laughs> and a padded cell, I think. So I don't really look back. I look forward and say, OK, well, that's God. I can't change that. I can make it better today. Mm. And I think it's really important to have that attitude. Yeah. And if you were going to write your, your own tombstone, you said you've done your obituary. Yeah. Tombstone has to be a short number of words. Uh. Here lies Shane Warne, he... Bold Shane. <laughs> no, <laughs> loved by Brooke Jackson in summer. You know what, oh, you, yeah. Shane, you brought me fantastic yeah. pleasure kids. on the pit. You were Thanks seriously one of the greatest entertainers and performers the cricket world's ever seen. More than that, you're a great bloke. Thank and you. And you're a long time. You've been very loyal yeah, and uh, a very good guy to know. So it's been great to have you on the programme. It's thanks a fantastic book written by Martin Nichols. Shane Warm, No Spin. It is one of the most honest books you will read by any sportsman and I can commend it to everybody. So enjoy the Lovely read. Lovely to see you. Thank you. Shane, Thank you. great to see you, mate.